Joining us today is Toronto-based author, actor, screenwriter and director James Dick. Taking full advantage of his diverse skill set, James's training as an actor and media creator allows him to better envision and create new worlds in his writing. Among his works is Paper Might Revolution, a short story published in Blank Spaces magazine and Bend in the Wind, a short story based on goddess mythology published within the book Dreaming the Goddess. Welcome to the show, James. In your work, you were a quadruple thread as an author, actor, screenwriter, and director. What inspired you to get involved in this line of work? I think it was just kind of one thing after another. I, I've been a writer all my life and you know, a storyteller, a creator of worlds. And I really got into acting in high school and that sort of just led me to the Seneca acting for camera and voice program terrific program. Uh, did a year at Ryerson Theatre, but I really wasn't feeling like as an actor or writer all of my creative needs were being satisfied, so eventually I just branched out into the um, into the media program at Ryerson University and that really introduced me to all of these, uh, you know, different, uh, different styles of creating, you know, like filmmaking, uh, podcasts, and Really, I just I just got into those one by one and used each one as an avenue to explore what kinds of stories can I tell? Can I bring one of my written stories to life in a podcast format or a, or a film format? Uh, yeah, that's really just how the whole quadruple threat thing was born. Can you tell us a little bit more about your short story, Bend in the Wind? Uh, yeah, so so Bend in the Wind was... Um, was my contribution to the Dreaming the Goddess anthology, uh, an anthology published by uh, Dark Dragon Publishing, and the story, I, I guess it's its a story I've wanted to tell for a really long time, uh, the story of the Lithuanian uh, Romuvii, the Lithuanian pagans. It, I, I first learned about them when I, uh, I first learned about them through a video game actually, uh, um, uh, Medieval 2 Total War, and it really piqued my interest, like what is, what are these pagans do, still doing around in, in the 14th century. How are they still here with Christianity on all sides and, you know, external threats from the Mongols? And it just got me really interested in their story. And I learned that they've survived virtually every disaster that destroyed cultures around them. Like they, they are born survivors. And I really wanted to tell their story and really introduce people to this, uh, to this culture. Cause I think that their story is a lot of culture stories these days. Your first publication credit as a writer that you did was Paper Might Revolution, a March of 2020 issue of Blank Spaces magazine. What was the process like for you when creating and publishing your first publication credit as a writer? Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> um, yeah, so Blank Spaces was a magazine that I've been aware of for a really long time and submitted to a couple of times. And Paper Might Revolution was almost like a Hail Mary for me. Like I. I'd submitted a bunch of other stories that I thought would fit blank spaces and all of them were rejected. And I, I just reached this point where I'm like, okay, well, Paper Mites is the only thing that I have uh, in, my, in my portfolio that has been edited. I've had a lot of people take a look at it. I feel like it's a very strong piece, but is anybody going to want to publish it? Like it's this really, it's a very satirical, strange story about bugs living in books. Like who's going <laughs> to, who's going to want to publish that? So. I sent it to Blank Spaces, didn't hear anything for four months. It turned out they lost the piece, found it again in their database, and said, hey, we really like this. Uh, can we, is it still up, is it still available? Can we publish it for you? And that's how Paper Mites um, sort of launched my career. Oh, bug, bugs living in books. Who, who would have thought, except for you, I guess? <laughs> So, Big surprise. So being uh, the, the creative genius that you are, what is your creative process? It's very, I would say very painstaking and detail oriented. Uh, yeah, when I first started learning to write it, I, I felt like I had a lot of freedom to just do whatever I wanted and people are going to say, oh, this guy, this kid's a genius. He's going to love it. There, we're, we love his work. But um, yeah, after I started sending some work out, I realized you, you just can't put writing out into the world and expect people to like it right away. You got to fine tune it. You got to have some craft, some creative flair. And I didn't really get that until I started attending Ryerson. Ryerson Media Production has a lot of programs that 
teach you how to take an idea, find the best version of that idea, and pare it down to the bare bones. Just, okay, communicate what the story, get it out there, trim the fat, basically. Mm -hmm. And that is, so the creative process for me is I get a, I get a rough draft down, I, I sit on that for a little week, just, just for a little bit, usually a week or two weeks, just to you know let the story settle. And then I go in, write a second draft, and sort of trim that down to the most essential version of the story. Like, what do I really want to tell? What, what details are most important? What's the fewest number of words I can use in the story? And then I send that off to my, uh, to my editor, Genevieve Clovis, and she takes a crack at it, takes out any, anything I've missed, and then I send it to a, to a publisher that I think would make a great fit for the story. You, you write some very unique work. What's inspiring all of this? Where are you pulling from? It's, it's a combination of things. I, I think it's it's my own life, my own uh, my own thoughts about the universe. It's the it's the stories that I read. Uh, right now, I'm working on some. You know, I'm reading some sci-fi. I'm reading some fantasy. Those are direct inspirations uh, for my work. Video games are also a huge inspiration. Uh, conversations with my brother. Uh, he's an incredibly smart. Uh, smart person he's a historical he's a historian knows a tremendous amount about history so he's a major inspiration for my work uh yeah they just and i think really it it's about knowing when when an idea is good and strong and should be pursued and you never know when where they're going to come from of the projects that you have been involved with to date which was your favorite Ooh. it's hard to say <laughs> very hard um I think I would have to say uh, Bend in the Wind because it was the most, to date it's the most challenging story I've ever written, the most difficult uh, emotionally to to finish. There's some very dark stuff and very uh, difficult character arcs in that story. So, and it took the longest to write, like as a short story, taking a month to finish it for me, that's pretty excessive. Like usually I can finish a short story in like a week or two weeks. Uh, and the fact that it had such a tremendously quick response from Dark Dragon Publishing and the fact that so many people, it, it resonated with so many different people, I'm, it's a tremendous point of pride for me. Do you have any upcoming projects that our viewers can look forward to? Yes, I have another uh, flash piece that's coming out in uh, Improbable Quarterly, uh, either next year or the year after, and I'm really just submitting a whole bunch of short stories to different publications and hoping that they land and if if they do you'll be the first person to know <laughs> oh, perfect i'm looking forward to it what kind of advice would you give to aspiring writers actors and directors because you, your works are so great Ooh, <laughs> uh, that's a tough one um i think for let's start with directors for directors i would say just find the most talented people you can and surround yourself with them, whether they're cinematographers, writers, editors, and really just learn to listen to them, learn about them, learn what their skill sets are, and start thinking about how you can take advantage of uh, take advantage of those in your own uh, in your own projects. Because you know a, a director's really only as good as the team he's got. Uh, for writers, I would say. I know a lot of writers start out with a great deal of ambition and want to write novels right off the bat. I was one of those writers. Uh, I would recommend really starting with the shortest story you can, either like less than a thousand words, less than 3,000 words. Learn to write those short stories first because everything that you can do on a small scale scales up to the novel level. So once you have that, just get that skill set for writing short fiction in place and then build out from there. And for actors, I think, try to have a full, fruitful life outside of acting. Because as <laughs> I've learned from, I've learned from my acting teachers and from my own experiences that the business takes a lot out of you as a human being, and it's so so important to be a fully realized person outside of acting, in order to be a good actor on stage or in front of the camera. You need to have that that fullness and richness to your life, or else you're just you're just going to be a person who reads lines. Okay, so now I have a very hard question for you. Are you ready? 
ready. Go for it. <laughs> In your opinion, what has been the greatest accomplishment for yourself thus far? Greatest accomplishment. <laughs> I think career-wise,、uh, in writing, it was my first professional sale of a short story with Improbable Press. That really was the moment where I.、Uh, it was actually a reprint of the Paper Mite story. So <laughs> that that sort of taught me that、um, you don't. You have no idea where a story is going to go once you've written it, and it can take you to some really surprising places. And also, that moment was when I really cracked the professional writing circles, and it was a tremendous、uh, achievement for me. And I'm looking forward to publishing a lot more work with Improbable in the future. They are a tremendous publishing house. Now, with your greatest achievement, what was the greatest challenge while pursuing that work? Definitely maintaining my optimism and perseverance because it's it's really a numbers game as a writer. You are going up against so many、uh, great pieces when every time you submit a short story, and the odds of you making it are vanishingly small. Like I think for、uh, Dark Cheer, the anthology I mentioned、uh, with Improbable Press, there were something like 500 submissions and only. Forty got selected for the book I was in, so、wow. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, something main, about your writing. May, I got yeah. So it's a combination of of skill and luck, I think, as a as a writer. So yeah, cra- really, really cracking the professional circle was、uh, was important for me. But you have to stay optimistic. You have to believe in the stories that you're telling in order to be successful. It, it's just it, it's really, really hard, but. If you write good work and you believe the stories, you will get there. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, James. We're looking forward to seeing your future projects. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And thank you to all our viewers at home for tuning in. This has been your host Julia Cosby, and you're watching Ink TV. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications to keep up to date with all of our latest content.